Hello everyone and welcome back to the most the most recent eh, most recent episode of Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. I have so this if all goes as planned, this should be the second to last episode before we break for the summer. If all doesn't go planned, which is knowing these guys is more than likely, uh, we might have one extra episode early July just to wrap things up before we break for the summer. We will see what happens. Uh, because we were uh, we ended last session fairly uh, quickly because well none of us really wanted to stay past four hours uh, we are going to pick it up pretty much right away with a su supplemental log from the commander please take it away Mr. Dalrum first officer's log stardate 84417.7 the station's currently running at yellow alert in low power mode all four of the Akashi have been located three of the individuals are currently locked in the bay brig and are going through the interrogation process the other individual sir came to the injuries they sustained and the doctors will be performing an autopsy here shortly the situation with the vatars remains tense we continue to provide safe harbor for the imperial leader of the imperium the rebels have blockaded the entrance to the nebula uh I am going to try to negotiate with them to at least allow the supply run through to the station so we can regain our power and log. All right. So we are going to pick up pretty much where we left off in the security, uh, the security office, where you have where Captain Crawford, Lieutenant Demos, and eh, Midas. And I believe Rayner was the individual who was, who has interrogation, are now busy yep. looking at the individuals. Now that we have identified them, I shall put name tags on them just to make sure that everyone can keep. Otherwise, they'll just be known as blue, yellow, and pink. And I have not gone to all the effort to come up with cool sounding names for them to be degraded as such. <laughs> Probably for the best because it end up being Inky, Binky, Pinky, and Clyde. Oh, God, no. Oh, oh, no. Well, we uh, do have a ghost aboard the station now. It's one of the dead compatriots. Hey! hey. Yeah. <sighs> uh, now, the question is which one would be Clyde? The dead one. <laughs> oh, I like Clyde. <laughs> Sigh. What have you guys done to me? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Uh, the the crints, the the ones who are the hunters, uh, sit in their cells, uh, fairly calm and peaceful like. Their tails are wrapped around one of their legs, and they sit cross-legged in their cells. They stare at you with uh, expecting eyes. Uh, their tongue licks the air from time to time. But beyond that, they're silent unless willingly, unless you want to engage them. Uh, I'm going to sit on a chair in front of the pink one, and I'm just going to be polishing the knee that I had firmly on their chest. <laughs> Do an intimidation roll. <laughs> All right. <That's... laughs> it, uh, it puffs its chest out and back a few times with a little wince every now and then as it does so. So, Captain, or Mr. Rayner... Who wants to start asking questions if that is what you want to do remind me which which one was the one that attacked crawford initially was it the pink one i think or no uh let's do you mean the one that showed up in your room or the one that sh attacked you in sick bay uh the one that showed up in his office he didn't actually attack you he just sort of materialized on a chair and you shot him i didn't shoot him okay dalrum <laughs> shot him <laughs> Uh, that would be the blue one, Verifier Cricked. Verifier Cricked, that's right. That was the best shot I made of the entire game last time. It was pretty good. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, Crawford will go up to Verifier Cricked. He, unlike the other two crints, uh, Verifier Cricked stands and as you approach your side of the forest field, he approaches his. 
you notice as the as he gets fairly close to the force field, his skin be, takes on a bit of a uh, a slight texture similar to hair standing up on end, hmm. which backs which backs ah which, and he takes a step back and the texture returns to scaly smooth. Captain, congratulations Verifier. on the hunt. What now? Well, from earlier, it seems that along with coming after me, you're also coming up after the the Tarsus Imperator. How high was that individual on your list? It was not a... The, ah, the Imperator was not an... was not a planned prey. However, once his appearance was known and yours was your and you were well protected zint or krint zarl he nods to the yellow one seemed to think it appropriate to it that he could win with that prize so he wasn't really on your list at all Hunts have to adapt, after all. I, he was a very worthy uh, an Imperator of the Vitars Imperium, would have been a worthy prize. I see. Which actually reminds me, and Crawford will kind of, you know, tap his comm badge. Captain Crawford to uh, Dr. Sulkin. Yes, Captain. How's the Imperator doing? The Imperator himself is still conscious, or un unconscious. Life signs are still there, but there's not much, if anything, that I can do with his mind. Though I'm about to question to see if there's a process I might perform. I see. That's all. Thank you. Verifier Crick just stands expectantly. I'm sure you're probably expect wondering what we'll do with you. That is the next quest. That is the question, isn't it? Yes, but I believe that's more up to this man here, even though I'm the man in charge. And he kind of points over at Demos. He'll kind of like lean down to Demos and sort of just in like a hushed whisper. What do you think? Should we turn him over to proper authorities or <clears throat> let them be on their way? Demos will just finish polishing up, polishing up his knee and just look at the pink one. They've been humiliated enough. I believe in their culture, and if I'm assuming correctly, this is unacceptable for them. Sending them back home in disgrace should be a sufficient enough warning that they should stay away from the Federation. Am I right? Verif uh, verifier Crick nods. Yes, as the verifier, I hereby I have declared that all that this hunt election that this hunt election has failed. All the Crints have proven unworthy to become tribe leaders. Excellent. Well, Demos, if you will. Um. Out of character, which player did we have controlling Rainer? I'm, I'm pretty sure he me. was... Just yeah. whoever? Whichever. Gotcha. I don't remember who made him offhand, but he's here now. Gotcha. I made Rainer. Ah, okay. I can take Rainer. Right. In that case, I'm going to go down to Medbay to check on the Imperator. You and Rainer... 
and get what information you can out of them and send them on their way. And he'll sort of pat Deimos on the shoulder. And then if you look Deimos, there is he is now kind of like palmed a black pip onto your shoulder. And Crawford will exit. All right. Uh, so am I to assume then that Lieutenant Demos is once again Lieutenant Commander, or have you basically demoted him to Ensign? <laughs> oh, God, no. no, 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 no. He's a he's a Lieutenant Commander again. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> That's cruel, man. You notice that both of your gold pips are gone. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, we notice the smell of burnt human against the force field. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see nothing. I hear nothing. <laughs> oh, I'm not in the scene. I really don't see anything. I'm just told to fix the um, <laughs> shield. Uh... Okay, so Lieutenant D Lieutenant Demos is now once again Lieutenant Commander. We have now made that effective on his token. Midas buzzes a and sings a little chirpy tune. Uh, as uh, Captain Crawford, you as you uh, begin to exit, uh, ah, as you exit the security office, Lieutenant Jaris Tiem walks in, sees you, stands at attention, and reports that the diplomats have been secured. Excellent. Yeah. You Thank you, Lieutenant. That, you notice that uh, Lieutenant, or that his uh, sh uniform has been torn up a bit. Looks like you're in a bit of a scrap, Lieutenant. It was a bit of a challenging situation there, but yeah, I got the got the ambassadors there safe back to their quarters safely. So now, now without a little ruckus here. Good. Well, you seem fine. Uh, continue on with your duties and good job. Thank you, sir. As he's actually bleeding internally. No, uh, <laughs> no, no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> I, I kind of figure that by this point you've already gone to sick bay and are now back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, as Captain Crawford exits the scene, anything that Demos, Rayner, or TM wish to do? Oh, I'm going to walk up to the force field here. All right. Do you have a vessel nearby we can transport you to? Yes. Is it cloaked? We use the term shrouded, but yes. And the method for sabotaging our power supply system, how is this accomplished? As verifier, it is my duty to prepare the grounds for the hunt. This involved a thorough scouting of the area, notifying interesting prey, and, a pr and assigning values to each. I was mm. the individual. I performed the analysis approximately three weeks ago in your station time. The I returned with an analysis, and one of our bioscientists gave me a chemical to treat your fuel rods. And I'm assuming you achieved access through your shrouded technology. Yes. With the amount of traffic coming to and from your station, it was easy. Do you have a crew aboard this vessel that's waiting for your signal right now? No. We have a... Ah. Implanted into each of us is a homing beacon. We simply activate it with the proper uh, pheromone charge, and it activates. Your shields, of course, have to be down. Hmm. Rami. Yes, Lieutenant Commander, and congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. 
Establish a containment force field around the morgue where we're containing the deceased intruder. Highest level. Acknowledged. Activating bio... Ah, activating... Ah, activating biohazard containment field around... Uh, da, around autopsy base 2. Now, verifier. Yes? You're going to tell me how we can detect your shroud, and I will guarantee that I will not share this information with anyone outside of this facility. It'll be simply used to prevent you from infiltrating this base again. If you do not wish to share, well, the three of you are free to go. The fourth body will remain and be dissected and studied. And once it has been pulled apart by every seam, sinew, and tissue, it will then be delivered in a small container of whatever goo pile it remains as to your people. As consideration, a thank you, and a warning. Or you can simply have the body right now if you want to give me the information I wish. You have killed it. It is yours to do with as you wish. Very well. And if that's the case, any information we learn from this body will then be shared amongst not just the Federation, but any neighboring allies. Your hunts will become very difficult, unless you wish to speed this process up and simply tell me what I want to know to keep my station safe. Roll me a Presence Plus security test, and this will be opposed by him. So, let's see what he... Has. Okay. I don't have... Okay, what's he rolling? Uh, he is rolling. Let's see what he gets. Roll 2 to 20. Well, that's a critical fail. Uh, I will buy... I'll give you a threat. Okay. For an extra dice. Sure. Because I don't have any focuses for this. All right. You ju uh, Because he is defending, you need two successes. Okay. Hmm. No, that's... Hmm. Uh, he sta... Uh, yeah, he... I'm going to pop a determination. Ah, okay. No one will stand between me and those I am to protect. That sounds like a good value to me. Watch it not work. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, man. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! And that is a grand total of four successes, so you get three momentum out of the deal. Um, isn't it only two? Sorry, I don't want to over... But I th thought you said he needed two to... Oh, my bad. Yep. My apologies. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah. It's beaten by two successes, so you get two momentum. Uh, thank you for teaching... Re reminding me how to count. <laughs> Verifier... Just keeping, it, keeping us honest. Verifier Crict stands up. Hmm. He attempts to outstare you, but that is a physical impossibility. Very well. What I am unfamiliar with the extents with the precise biomechanical uh, detection methods required. However, my understanding is that our fields are be are. What, react well with a uh, with an oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide atmosphere however it is the nitrogen that allows us to stay as hidden as possible if you could somehow deprive our ground of nitrogen then perhaps we would be easier to find Hmm. And is this a field that emits from you or from your suit? It is not a suit. It is our bio... It is our skin. We have evolved... Our home planet was once a very predatory place. Very violent. And we learned... We survived by adapting. Those who could adapt, change, hide survived those who could not adapt became food now oh, wonderful the hunted became the hunters yes 
I prefer to think that we are more of a balanced society. After all, if we hunt everything to extinction, all we have to hunt is ourselves. That is why these hunts attract so much interest. Well, I'm a man of my word, so I'll let you go. But again, inform your people. If they come here, they will not leave happily. Understood. What was his name, by the way? The one in the the one that you have bested. Yes, easily too, I might add. <laughs> yeah, he always favored a more. What stalker approach against you? I could see that not f being an effective strategy. His name was Drollinger. Give his family, his kin, whatever, my condolence. They will be happy to know that he fell to a worthy prey, or a worthy foe. Rainer, Lord of the Fields. Mm -hmm. And Rainer, with a quick nod, Rainer activates, or deactivates, the force fields. I hit the button. <laughs> you hit the button. All three of them. Uh, take a step out. Uh, Verifier quick, quickly makes a hissing noise at each one of them. All three of them materialize in a sort of like a Jem'Hadar invasive transporter style. In Commander Dalrum, you're at Ops. Uh, where? Yeah, I've probably made my way there after recovering. Yeah. Uh, you're at Ops, where Lieutenant Darval reports a small... Let's see, who's not here? Most of these people aren't here. Where Lieutenant Darval notes a small... Uh, a small ship the size of a runabout, sir, has decloaked and is making its... Is making its way out of the nebula. Make sure to take good scans of it. We need to make sure that we can find them should they appear again. Yes, sir. And roughly around this time, the captain makes his way into the infirmary. <clears throat> Where you see the roly-poly form of Director Fomo just sort of sitting in one of the lounge chairs, attempting not to make eye contact with the Delta Nurse Lieutenant Ashea, who has just returned from applying a uh, follicle regenerator to Specialist Zack. Uh, Meiloon's exosuit. Thanks, Les! <laughs> she gives a smile that would melt your ice-cold Tellarite heart. <laughs> and there was some question over what Meilun's exosuit looked like, and there's very little in the way of good exosuit designs, and this was the best one I found. So, <laughs> here it is. Meilun would sit on the top. The other sort of spindly legs will would extend or retract to allow him to enter or exit almost any humanoid size uh, building. And it's built for all terrain, should you decide to bring him on away team missions. That sounds like both a threat and a promise. You know, it's, that's my job is to basically throw tools at you, and if you use them, cool. If you don't, that's also fine. <laughs> Uh, where is the captain's token? The captain's token is not around. Dalton is also. So, Lassie, do I get a sponge bath while I'm going there? Oh, good lord. She looks back. You are far. If I were to give you a sponge bath, you would wrinkle up so much that one of the that one of the Ferengis would assume that you're a prune and try to eat you. And it's probably right around then that the captain walks in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty feisty for one without a beard. <laughs> what was that about a prune, Lieutenant? 
Ah, oh, it's my understanding, Bay. From my time with Tellarites, they communicate primarily through insults, Captain. That's what I've learned as well. Uh, he turns to the director. Director FOMO. He wobbles to his feet. Captain, I believe that we have the Imperator's restored memory on a, on a data core. We are... If once we can get it to a facility, we should be able to uh, start fresh, sir. At that point, I want to come out of the uh, room. Of course. Dr. Sulkin. The problem with this theory of his is he has given me the Imperator's body to dissect and destroy, while the Imperator himself is still a functioning human alien being. <laughs> I do not feel that that's logical. I would agree with that, Doctor. And he kind of looks to the director sort of suspiciously. Captain Crawford, Dr. Salkin, as he holds a, a chip the size of a, like a miniature like a USB stick in his hand. As far as the Vitaris are concerned, this, and he holds it up and sort of wags it around as if he's, as if he won it in a lottery. This is the Imperator now. The Imperator's body there is the past version and will, and ceases to be of all relevance once this is implanted into a new body. As for what you wish to do with the Imperator, we can return, if it makes you feel any better, as many of your um, single-lifed species are, we can simply, we can bring him back with us to the facility where we can turn, or where, where we can turn his body, or break his body back down into raw organic material. And if it would please you even more, we could make his new make its new body out of that material from which we broke down. I Why couldn't you just simply download the data into his body now? His current brain is incompatible, Captain. Is there a way of testing this using the, the, eh, the technology we have here. I'm sorry, Captain, but your facilities, while impressive, are not to the, are not to these, um, extent, are not to the extensive requirements that are needed by the Eternity Research Group. We can build a, we can build a, a new, uh, blah, 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 blah. we can build a fresh body create a brain that is compatible with this memory, insert it, and we will have the Vitaris Imperium will once again have a Imperator that is fit to lead us. What's to say that this Imperator's new brain would be incompatible with the new body? He looks up to uh, Dr. Sulkin. Well, sir, uh, well, Captain, this was a gamble and a penance. And quite frankly, sir, I have nothing else to lose. Nothing to lose how? Well, the Vitaris Imperium is currently tearing itself to pieces. That is going, that will happen if the Imperator can, if this does not work with a new body, but, and it will also continue to tear itself apart if him, and he points to the slightly delusional, or the completely delusional core body in the surgical bay, if he continues on his current path. So, that's why I have this. This right now is the only way to return the Imperium back to normal. Is 
Starfleet officer and a doctor, I have signed a Hippocratic Oath. You have given his body to science, and he is a living being. I do not see I, why... I'm... Go on. Dr. Salkin, if you're squeamish, I'll kill him myself. I heck, cannot allow that. Heck, his bodyguards, and he gestures to the two individuals uh, with uh, sur uh, surprisingly scary-looking rifles in the back. Heck, they could probably do it, too. That's sort of their job. Not one of their duties. Your... Out of character, their ship is still here, right? Oh, yes, it is still in... It is still... Eh. I'm assuming that's where Commander Keevan is currently dealing with now because their ship, the Kovamesh, is not in a... Not in a... Not in a shape fit to run a blockade. And there's right. a blockade about right. them out there want, that want the Imperator. Mm-hmm. Why don't... I'm not saying we can, Director, but... I believe you should at least give us the chance to try and fix his brain before you... take an even bigger risk by putting the data into a new body. If that is your, des have... if that is your desire, Captain, you are more than welcome to try. Our... I have... Society treats mental problems like this as a very disposable one. They download their they download their personality into a uh, ah, into a data into a memory storage unit, and then the ERG will just make them a new body. I so, have personally practiced many forms of meditation and delved up delved in delved deep into many minds. I still feel the best way is to help the Imperator instead of make a new one. If that is your desire, Doctor, I would be very interested in watching. Captain? You're more than welcome to try your damnedest, Lieutenant Commander. <laughs> Director, you're more than... All right. More than free to watch, if you desire. He nods. Thank you, Cap. Thank you, Captain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I believe I'm needed back up in operations. And none of them stop him. He's going to go back up to ops. All right. Doesn't sound like anyone's going to do that. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side of the infirmary, uh, Dr. Abbott, left to her own devices, has wandered into um, uh, the private, private surgical bay, too. Where there's currently a splayed-out corpse of an Akashi. Uh, the green color pigment has faded, uh, replaced with a milky white color. The black parts of the skin have lightened slightly to more of a sickly gray, but the eyes remain a vibrant green color. If there's anything you wish to do at the moment, you may do so, or we can just, you know, leave the corpse to follow for another time. Oh, did they not ask for their corpse back? Yeah. No, yeah. No, they didn't ask for it back. You killed it, so by all rights oh. of the hunt, it's yours. Yeah, he says it's ours to do with whatever you please. Well, I, I guess we confirm their uh, assertion that nitrogen helps them cloak. Mm -hmm. pin, pin the tail on the Akashi? <laughs> if Dr. Abbott would like to perform a 
uh, autopsy, and she's more than welcome. I'm particularly busy at this moment. <laughs> Is Scotty around? Nope, he's... I'm here. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you're going to get yourself all gussied up into a medically sterilized hazmat suit and begin cutting? Sure. All right. Are you going to wear, like, the red gown and then, like, still wear, like, the fedora? <laughs> <laughs> that was the silliest costume choice. <laughs> you know, but, yes. red gown, and she's going to wear stilettos, because why not? <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to surgery, surgery in style. All right. Uh, so basically, um, the understanding the Akashi is going to be a extended task. So it is going to be a work track of 20, uh, difficulty of 4, magnitude of 3, and a resistance of... Four, just because their biology is extremely alien and you're not entirely sure what you're going to find when you start cutting. That is true, although she does have quick study, so when attempting a task that involves an unfamiliar medical procedure, ah. or in which is you can treat an unfamiliar species, you ignore, ignore difficulty increases. Ah, okay, then let's call this a difficulty three test. Ah. For once, I built her correctly. All right, difficulty three for the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, so control plus medicine for the first test. All right. Um, let me look at my other talents because I forget how I do her. I did made her. Yeah. So I also have untapped potential. Oh, uh, what does that do by so, chance? That's the... Uh, when she's a young officer, she oh, can yes. uh, re she can roll to get her uh, determination back. Ah, cool. So she's gonna pop her determination. All right. Um. Wow. Um. I have to adapt to succeed. Got to try something new. Yeah. I have a lot to learn. All of those are good values. Everyone, yes. I have to help everyone succeed. Wow. Built her. It's like you <laughs> built her with alien autopsy in mind. <laughs> I mean, I also have xenobiology, cultural studies, philosophy, yeah. genetics. <laughs> Not bad for a dame. <clears throat> so you popped her determination that to give you two successes so already. You got I dropped more? The, so we get a... Now, one to momentum. Yep. Uh, yep, so you get one momentum. Uh, so if you could please roll me six challenge dice. And that's five so far. So with... um, can I do here? Uh, you can spend momentum to reduce resistance. You could spend momentum to reroll those zeros. <clears throat> um... How does everybody feel about getting rid of uh, doing uh, two momentum to get rid of the resistance, therefore dropping the difficulty hitting a magnitude? I'm good with that. That sounds good, man. So we'll spend two momentum to drop the resistance to zero. Okay. So that's five successes. Woohoo. Okay, so you have made a... Uh, you have made a breakthrough in studying their biology. Uh, it seems that their um, da. it seems that their skin is actually a multitude of uh, layers. Each is uh, each can be uh, each layer can be uh, each layer has a color pigment change cis, uh, organ similar to that of a earthen chameleon but far more uh, sensitive. In fact, most of this species' sense of touch would most likely be extremely sensitive. 
walking on carpet while smooth and comfortable for most humans or humanoid creatures would might feel like sandpaper to these guys they are hypersensitive yeah uh, acutely aware of their surroundings and very able to manipulate the color of their skin and as de as has eh, and has been learned there does seem to be a spe a special um, chemical compound that is exuded from certain pores on the skin that does seem to react to nitrogen. And that seem that will be a good first step because this is one of those you know extremely long and thorough dissection things. It's the montage. It's a montage, yes. Okay, so we'll come back to Sulkin's uh, mind meld scene shortly. And now we will follow the captain back to Ops. Uh, as you leave the infirmary, Captain Crawford, uh, who is, uh, you find yourself out on the boulevard. Where, who but Damon Gong is the first to meet you. She comes up. Captain, Captain, when might this yellow alert business be wrapped up and concluded? We're not allowed to buy your overly draconian security policies. We can't sell things during... A yellow alert you have no idea how long this yellow alert situation has been hurting our profit margin your profit margin will be fine Damon and you couldn't tell we have a, a tarse blockade outside so until that's gone we can't lift the yellow alert oh uh, uh, blockade now well, perhaps it's money they perhaps we could make a deal my ship is in more... my ship is in docking bay too, Captain. The limitless latinum could be an on could be a diplomatic envoy. Four I feet. Believe... I believe that Starfleet is more than capable of handling this on its own, Damon. I imagine you're walk you're doing this walking and talking thing. She's yeah. struggling to keep up. Captain, rest assured that this, that your practices go against Ferengi commerce law. I will be filing a direct report with the, your Ambassador Paul to go back and expressing my sincere concerns about this, how this matter was handled. Also, the fact that your security guard did, and at this point, the turbolift doors close, preempting what is probably a long rant. Crawford just breathes a sigh of relief as the doors close. <laughs> the doors close, and you find yourself back at Ops. Dolrum is keeping a close eye on things. And Adrak Charmal is just sort of leaning over the railing, keeping an eye on various Vitaris interests, which from here is pretty minimal. But he likes the view. <laughs> Commander? Adrak? Welcome. Welcome back to Ops, Captain. Hmm. Captain. Considering a talk I just had with the Ferengi, I'm glad to be back. I'll alert Paul. I just hit a button. It's like this is a normal thing. I'm sure he's receiving a very strongly worded message as we speak. Well, he's currently been entertaining children, so we'll see it when he gets to it. All right. <laughs> Lieutenant, I assume that the Vitars blockade is still just outside the station, and he'll probably just look out what would be like a visual and see that it's still there. The the it shifts to a remote ah he puts yeah that 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 uh, Lieutenant Derval pushes a button on his display con 
on his display station, and the scene shifts to the exterior of the Carceri Nebula, where there's a grand total of seven Vitar uh, small Vitar's cruisers that are blockading the only stable entrance into the nebula. Uh, Captain, we should be very th grateful that they've decided not to attempt any form of direct action against us or the station. The Midas receiver is barely uh, 400 kilometers away from their current location. If they destroy that, we would lose uh, long-range communication with the Federation at large. That we would. Um. Hmm. Adrak, I would like you to know that we're working on, well, fingers crossed, on a process that should hopefully restore your Imperator to a normal state. <laughs> and. Yes, uh, Director Fomo had al has already informed me that there has been a change of plans based on your spe your Federation's sentimentality for their existing bodies. Sentimentality is a word to use. I'm not sure if I necessarily call it the correct one. Uh, Captain, when you have lived, uh, and he does a quick mental count, approximately 200 and ten years and have been through at least six or seven different unique bodies and experiences you might see how everything how we view these things as transitory however as you are currently providing host and protection to me and my men and the Imperator I will I respect your species cultures and beliefs And I thank you for doing so. Captain, what is your game plan? <sighs> Frankly, we're in a bit of a tight spot, but... If we're somehow able to restore the Imperator to their rightful state, surely Adrak and the the Adrak and the director can convince them for lack of a better way of putting it um, Adrak Charmal nods that is the plan in his, back when he was fully mentally capable, the Imperator was a very eloquent speaker I'm pretty sure that he would have what, whatever words would come out would be enough to bring, while not seal the wounds entirely, at least start the healing process within the Imperium. Excellent. So we can just pray that that works. He raises an eyebrow at the word pray, if you wish. And meanwhile, just because I think uh, Commander Keevan, uh, down in the shipyards, let's have a look see at the uh, the Kova Mesh, which will be, um, for some reason, I don't actually have a docking bay interior for the station. You'd think I'd have one of those by now, but I don't. You should just have the picture of the open window for the docking rings inside yeah. the station. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, so the Kova Mesh is sitting, I believe, in Docking Bay, or in, uh, da. what's the word I'm looking for? Dry Dock Base 2. It suffered a significant amount of damage getting here. And as you have already c covered with your basic inspection of things, these the Vitars do not build their ships with much in the way of redundant systems, beefed up structural integrity fields or anything that would actually encourage ships to stay together under extenuating circumstances. 
Well, that's not very efficient. Well, when they treat, when you treat uh, your soldier's life as literally disposable, why bother building a stupidly, uh, a stupidly durable ship to, you know, protect it? That is the Vitaris military ethos here. Yeah, true enough. Build them cheap, send them out. Uh, so if you could please roll me a control plus engineering uh, to f dictate how your repair crews are going to go about things. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three. Gotcha. Uh, would we go with troubleshooting for repairs like that? or uh, If you had something along the line of scheduling or team management, that would be better because this is more of a uh, project management style role. Yeah, good point. Um, yeah, we'll go with it and see what happens. All right. All right. Well, that's only one success. Uh, so you're used to dealing with Federation starships. You've got the basic orders down pat. Fix that engine casing. Check to see what makes this thing tick and make sure it will still tick, that sort of thing. But repairs are going to take a while. Yay, okay, people, let's do this. <laughs> okay. We are going to bounce back to the infirmary, where we see Mr. Sulkin standing over with, let's see, let me just organize some tokens here, because Nurse Katok standing still with his batleth. We have Dr. Sulkin, Director Fomo is standing a respectable distance back. And Nurse Ashea stands ready to assist. And Director. I want to do this a little differently. Okay. How would basically, you like to do it? Basically, um, just uh, setup's fine, but basically with like candles and incense and uh, kind of that route okay. where. Um, I want to try to, like, more go on, like, a spiritual level. Ah. Okay. So a full, proper Vulcan meditation. Yes. Okay. Cool. Director Fomo finds all of this to be fascinating. And if you should... If uh, Dr. Sulkin, you ever, you know, fall ill and succumb to the injuries uh, of space and whatnot... If your body could be donated to the Vitar's Eternity Research Group so that they could study the workings of your brain, they would be greatly appreciated. Useless. My Katra will live on. He is about to... He raises a finger and is about to ask the obvious question when he realizes that you should probably just get on with what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so you're going to... Oh, let's see. So, tell you what, let's roll a uh, control plus, uh, I want to say control plus command test to get yourself into the right state of mind here. And depending on how many successes you get will determine how easy the mind meld will be with Mr. Jappler. Okay, Ooh. this is going to be a hell of a mind melt then. That's zero successes. That is zero successes. Well, we are going to go ahead and do uh, determination. Okay. And a uh, calm mind is one that truly knows. That sounds like a good d value to me. And... We are going to do. We want to do. We, we what do we decide on? Uh, presence or insight? Um. Oh, so you're doing this for the mind meld, not to reroll the zeros. Oh, I no. I yeah. I was going to do the for the mind meld. I was cool. going to use my determination. Okay. So, um, what is the purpose of the mind meld? I'm going to try to see if there's any way to get into him, and try to get things straight, and okay. bring him at least you know. 
out and uh, mm -hmm. conscious and logic, you know. Okay. Uh, so roll me a control plus medicine test. And okay. this is going to be difficulty four. And uh, you already have two successes from your determination. <clears throat> and I am just because I find it amusing, I will spend a couple points of threat to increase the complication range 18 to 20. I will use a momentum. All right. And I'm using my focus guided meditation. Ah, that works. That is a grand total of five successes. Uh, so you get one momentum back. So that means we're at one? I believe you're at one momentum now, yes. So you are now more prepared for his particularly chaotic mind this time, unlike last time. You wander in, or you, what's the best way to, you step into a a uh, crowded room. Uh, voices are literally yelling at one another. Uh, however, all of the voices are that of Imperator Japler. Some of them are male, some of them are female, but you get the sense that they are all that of the Imperator. Some of them are, la are yelling louder than others. You get the feeling that these are the overriding portions of the consciousness that that the director has attempted to manipulate over the years. Uh, there are a lot of them. There are several who are attempting to argue back but are not doing well. And then there are several who are just sort of sitting on couches mumbling and fiddling with toys or other objects. Uh, you get the feeling that some of these are extremely old, even by Vulcan standards. Does there seem to be one that is more dominant? Like, is there like a central figure in the crowd? Uh, sadly, there is not. Um, the mind was... There's just so many different programs fighting for there are so many algorithms fighting for supremacy here that it will take a significant amount of time or a bit of luck to find which one is a which one should be a more dominant voice but if you were to roll me a insight plus medicine test okay. yeah let's do insight medicine maybe insights no insight medicine is a good one and if you have pattern analysis or anything along the lines of brain chemistry, neurochemistry, that would be good to use. And in all honesty, why am I doing this in this floor now? Surgery, internal medicine, emergency medicine, guided therapy, botany. Uh, <laughs> let's use guided therapy. I think that one will work here. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two, sorry. Oh. And that's uh, four successes. It takes you a while to, um, get ah, going up to each one, analyzing them before moving on. And if it weren't for someone who had not gone through the colon R, such as you have, uh, a lesser Vulcan mind might have given up or have picked the wrong one. However, you determine that a series of four Japplers who are manifested as sort of just talking quietly amongst each other while being, while simultaneously ignoring and being ignored by everything else around them seem to be the 
core personality of the Imperator. Salutations. All four of them immediately stop talking to each other and instead focus on you. Greetings, they say in unison. How may the Imperator serve the Imperium today? Your people need you. <clears throat> they look around, and you, you notice now that they're, they're moving in unison with each other. Are they not satisfied with all of the other Japplers? They are the ones who have been serving the Imperium for more recently than I. Your civilization has turned to chaos, infighting, destruction. I feel that you're, you need to take control. They begin to, uh, they begin to raise a finger and not that finger, just a finger. Uh, and begin to ask a question before one of the other incarnations of Je the Imperator literally expands to three times the size and bells them to shut the hell up. And at this point, if you could please roll me a presence plus command test, an opposed presence plus command test. And if you have doctor's orders, that would be a good talent to use here. Uh, so you need to beat one uh, you need uh, two or more successes in order to continue further down this particular path of Vulcan imposed therapy. get a momentum back from that yeah i did get yes a you did back, I? I actually got two momentum back from the last one okay you will use that momentum <clears throat> uh, they are they are cowed by the larger Imperator's commands. Uh, they begin... Uh, you see them physically shrink in size a, a, a fraction of a degree. And they begin to once again chat amongst themselves and continue to ignore you. The larger Imperator once again returns to normal size, turns around and starts berating another Imperator for the slight discoloration of his jacket. I will go behind the uh, the one that just grew up and yell or yelled. Okay. And <laughs> neck pinch him. Yeah. Okay. Um, neck pinching inside a Vulcan mind meld. Okay. Uh, we can make this work. So, roll me a control plus con. I think would be a good one for this. As this is a force of will. Con sure, sure. Yeah, either control con or control command, whichever one you believe is appropriate. Uh, and you only... Well, you only need one success to win. Okay. Control. I think I'm gonna... And there's four successes, so you get uh, three momentum. The yelly, shouty one collapses and vanishes. <laughs> Any more interruptions? 
and I will do that to all of you. The rest now, of the, the rest of the room doesn't seem to pay much attention to you. <laughs> the four that the four that have been clustered are definitely a little more interested in what you have to say. As I was saying, your people have de fallen into chaos. I th it is time for you to work together and take control. After generations of manipulation and subterfuge, it has collapsed your society. The four of them look to one another, and without much in the way of further vo ah, without much in the way of anything vocal being passed between them, they all sort of walk into each other, merging into one who literally dwarfs everything around him, and your psyche booms with the uh, reverberation of a s of two simple words shut up and the room goes silent i just dare look around with the one eyebrow raised fascinating all, yeah all of the other japplers male and female alike and some gender neutral all sort of turn and look at the Imperator. And it's about this point where the ah, where you are coming out of your trance and are once again back in the infirmary. Uh, you see that Lieutenant Ashea has brought you a, a glass of water and she kind of Reminds or she reminds you that it's been approximately two hours, and oh. politely suggests that you hydrate. Director <laughs> Fomo has fallen asleep on the couch. Uh, Sulkin, at oh wait, am I? Okay, I thought I was muted for a second. I'm sorry. Nope, you're here. <laughs> okay, cool. You'll hear a little beep over your communicator, Sulkin, and you'll hear Crawford's voice come out come out of it. How does it, how's it going down there? <clears throat> Strenuous, Captain. I have felt that I might have a breakthrough. Excellent. And to, just as you say the word breakthrough, uh, the Imperator's eyes open and focus for the first time. Uh, he sits up. His... Uh, body that has not really seen much use in the last several days creaks, groans, and cracks with the sudden movement. I will get up right away after, like, you know, taking a breath mm. and, like, Imperator, rest. You are... Your body is an empathy. Are you here? I am... I heard voices lots of them and then a calming one <sighs> it's difficult to remember the last few months here it's all a blur time's a blur sir where am i who are you and how dare you touch the imperator without permission i my name is sulkin i am a doctor aboard the Deep Space 15. Uh, Deep Space... That's... Starfleet, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah, he, he stands up. And his two bodyguards stand up and immediately rush to... Uh, 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 opposite sides of the surgical theater. Imperator, it would be wise for you to rest... Yeah, I. You may not be my typical doctor, but I feel that your advice is appropriate in this situation. However, one thing first. 
wake him. And he points over to the director who is sleeping on a couch. Curled up with drool. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lieutenant. Nod to her to yeah. get him up. She walks over and gives him a not ungentle nudge, jarring him awake. He rolls around, finds his feet, and uh, plops to him and plops to a standing position. He immediately sees the Imperator standing up. Uh, he bows his head and um, brings one of his ha brings one hand to his chest in salute. Imperator. I was unaware that I did not think this would work. I am blessed be the Imperium. Long live Imperator Japler the final. Japler's eyes narrow. Director Fomo your machinations over these centuries were subtle, but they've come to an end. As of this moment, on this space station, I hereby announce as the Imperator of the Vitaris Imperium that your position, that, er, that you are no longer qualified to be the director of the Eternity Research Group. You and your family shall be or shall relinquish all of your assets to the Imperium, and they shall go to a willing and or they shall go to a worthy successor for the position, one who has demonstrated integrity. You and your family shall relocate to the salt flats of Valoon, where you shall where you shall spend your days working as a as a salt as a salt miner and will once again and will work your way up in the imperial ranks once again perhaps in another 50 years you will prove yourselves worthy of a position within the ranks of the eternity research group or wherever your new ambitions take you but you will be watched for the rest of your life i will walk up to fomo and hold out my hand and just stare at him. How are you holding it out? Is it like to shake his hand? No, no. Holding it out like palm up. Oh. He takes his palm and sort of presses it against yours in at abject confusion? I look at him as like the device director. Um, oh, former oh. Director. Ah. Yes, yes. Right, yeah. Uh, he... And as if he is literally giving over a stick of valuable gold, or he gives it up, allow me to rephrase, he gives it up with the same reluctance that a Ferengi parts with a bar of latinum. He breathes a sigh of disgust at himself. But he... I, I will take it and hand it to the Imperior and basically say... This is an upgraded device of your memory ag algorithms. This has been refitted and adapted by our commander Keevan, um, and also adapted by what's her name? Sorry, Dolphin. Melun, and it's a he. Melun, he. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> and uh, I'm still new on this station. <laughs> yes, yes, you and, are. Uh, <laughs> He was going to destroy your body and recreate another form. This is an upgraded uh, device. I hand it to him and is like, it is yours to do with as you wish. He takes it and slides it into one of the bulky pockets in his robes. I shall... Thank you, Doctor. For your generosity and your honesty. It is something that seems to be lacking around here. And with that, he lies back, folds his hands over his stomach. Now, if you wouldn't mind fetching me some f water and some food, I believe that I am in need of some rest. Agreed. And I will actually, like, kind of wave for the guards to stand outside the door and let him close off. And we'll uh, let him 
rest and recuperate. All right. Okay, so that is pretty much where we're at. Next step is... Well, time to figure out what we're going to do next, I suppose. <laughs> and I think something like that might be best done through a... Uh, yeah. Unless the captain already has an idea, I'm I would propose a conference room. Um, unless the captain. Yeah, has I, had, I had a similar idea. Okay. It's basically my idea for how we're going to get this blockade out of here, but it can be done in the conference room, so we sure. can talk things over. Okay. Any excuse to break out this set piece that I love oh so much? As do I. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Just getting tokens going. Not needed. We have you and you guys. Captain, Commander, Adrak, I am missing the Doctor. Uh, who is here? We have Adrak Charmal, Demos, and because he would want to have a say in this, let's bring in the good old-fashioned Imperator as soon as I find him. Anyways, to kick it away. Well, I believe you all... Ah, you all know why we're gathered here. We're here to discuss how exactly we can get this Vitar's blockade to move. Uh, Dr. Sulkin, you had an update for us on the Imperator, as they're obviously here in good health, I'm assuming. Correct. The mind meld and meditation I've performed has been successful. He is of sound mind and body, though he needs rest and time to absorb. Of course. Imperator, have you been updated on what's been going on outside the station during your rest? Adrak Charmal has filled me in. I understand that the Imperator my Imperium has a mess due to my past self's incompetence. However, that has been dealt with. And if, if I am able to attract lo soldiers and subjects as loyal as Adrak Chermal, the Imperium will once again uh, be healed. And that I'm very glad to hear. The problem is... We would like to get this blockade out of here as quickly as we possibly can. Um, do you believe that a simple speech to your people would be enough, or is there something more involved? Words backed with action are the best way to... Instill loyalty, Captain. The he looks. Which one of you is in charge of repairing the Kova mesh? Uh, that would be myself. Ah. And what is the status of my de facto flagship? Things are taking a literal little. <laughs> little longer than I expected because I'm not as well versed in your technology as I normally am so it's been slow going but we are getting making some progress there's a side-eyed look between the Imperator and the Adrak the Adrak mumbles under his breath I'm sorry sir there was not a lot there was mo most of the engineering staff perished when Reactor Core 3 went nuclear. they have I promise that they've been doing a good job. Their technology is excellent. Uh, the Imperator brushes this aside, 
stands up and looks at Captain Crawford in, uh, in the eyes. And Cap uh, Crawford, you realize that there is a determination and a fire behind his, the Imperator's eyes that you haven't seen before. Even in your couple of dealings with the Vitaris Imperium before, the Imperator had, has always seemed tired, exhausted, but mm. there's a fire in him now. Upon seeing the fire and determination in his eyes, you see Crawford kind of, you know, crack a smirk. Captain, your technology is formidable, and your starships are impressive. If I could deliver... If I could be seen uh, aboard your... Or if I could give a speech that is potentially backed up by your starships, technologies, and prowess... The Imperium, the Imperium's descent, should be quelled. After all, your technology is, or your ship designs, have proven very robust to survive in this nebula. Of course, the question is, I'm not sure if there's really a ship that we can spare. We could. GM's note, the, the USS Layton is in docking bay 6, I believe. And the... Is the Layton uh, our Sao Paulo? Yes. Uh, no, it's uh, the Layton is... Or, sorry, not the Layton. The I... Uh, whichever one you're relying on. Arion? Classes. The Arion. I got them mixed up. No, you don't have the Layton yet. I'm sorry, I am foreshadowing something. My bad. The Arion is in docking bay 6. The Ariane also has diplomatic properties, so... And it is also possibly haunted. <laughs> hey, hey we're, working, we're working on the haunted part. <laughs> we're trying to make it more haunted. <laughs> I was say, it, actually, it actually has diplomatic suites. So, as a talent. So, mm -hmm. it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um... In conjunction with using Starfleet's technology imperator would having somebody in a high rank from Starfleet also be helpful or is that something that be simply purely of your doing if you're asking to accompany me on such a grand gesture captain I would be I would be grateful to have your presence I think that's something I would be more than happy to do, Imperator. As... We will remain at yellow alert until the blockade mm -hmm. is dispersed. Now, by chance, could Mr. Crawford please roll me an insight plus con roll? Actually, anyone can roll me an insight plus con roll. Difficulty of one. And whoever okay. beats it by the most successes will add that to the momentum pool. Insight con. Okay. Insight con. Um, what kind of focus does, should we be looking for? Uh, Starfleet regulations, prime directive, that sort of thing. Okay, I have Starfleet protocols. That focus. would work. I have protocol and diplomacy. Yes. Insight con. Okay. Oh my! That's three successes for Keevan. Uh, he even knows his stuff. I mean, he okay. did just pass his commander's test, so... That he did. Okay. Uh, so, Commander Keevan, what Captain Crawford is doing is to basically throw the Federation support in with a... or openly with uh, a side of an empire that is currently undergoing a political turmoil. Uh, this breaches several... Uh, now that the Imperator is has been helped, um, this is pretty much where Starfleet's mandate for assistance comes to an end. After this is definitely skirting, if not die, breaking wholeheartedly, various aspects of the Prime Directive. Or at least one of the uh, number of, diplom of uh, rules for diplomacy when interacting with... Uh, with neutral starfaring races. 
Whether or not you wish to say anything about this is completely up to you. In fact, uh, both uh, Dalrum, uh, Sulkin, and... Uh, no, sorry, that's a previous role for Sulkin. Yeah, both uh, Dalrum and Crawford know this too, but, you know, that's what you guys know. And I'll sort of, as I finish that sentence, before you actually ask us to roll this task, I was going to ask this. Unless there are any objections... I will look over at the captain and I will say, um, sir, not to be out of place, but wouldn't this be skirting the prime directive? It's it most certain, certainly would. I agree. However, <laughs> we've already provided asylum for them the Prime Directive kind of got thrown out a little bit ago. Keevan will have... now just stay quietly quiet. They will. They have requested asylum. And, and we granted it. And we granted it. Um, we are just following through on that. Yeah, in some ways, we could even uh, flavor it as if they're granted asylum, they're granted temporary citizenship on the station. They're just aboard the station's ship. On that same note, it has been requested of the Federation. This could be beginnings of negotiation and a start of a unification with the Velars Inter Imperium. Well, the Vitars. Vitars, whatever they're calling themselves. <laughs> we're, we're reunifying the Vitars, which we could have say that the Arian is uh, meant to play host as a neutral ground. Okay, good point. Oh, unless there are any other opinions that are meant to be thrown in the ring, and he'll kind of look over at Demos if we have them. I shall take that continued silence as a no. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're not giving me side eye. All right. I was going to say, Demos is muted. I don't know if he knows he's muted. He did mention pizza, so he's probably eating pizza. And we're all jealous. Lucky. All right. <laughs> I hey, personally, I out of, totally out of character. I personally love the fact that I have just now fully come full circle that I led the away team to break up the Pataris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gate jumper. Oh, yeah. we're, Sorry. We're, we're just giving the Nighthawk crew the big middle finger. It's fine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's what I love about it. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. For those who wonder how the Vitaris Imperium got in this sorry state, I would rec strongly recommend that you watch my my other show, the Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk. Plug and... here. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Shameless plug. Totally. Oh, I hit shift enter. Oh? I, I oh. said, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hit Welcome shift enter back. when he put the BRB, and now he's back. Oh. Welcome back. Do you have any two cents to put in on a slightly bending the Prime Directive more so than what we already have? Uh, considering the fact they got demoted for it, yes. <laughs> We're supposed to be by the book. Well, at the same time, what we just said, we kind of threw the book out the window when we decided to grant them asylum. And at the time they needed help, we rendered aid as part of our mandate. But anything True. further than that, we can't be involved in any political or personal vendettas. Although we can provide a neutral ground for negotiations. Yes, we can do that. Would that seem suitable to you, Imperator? To use the station or the area in itself as a neutral grounds for negotiate eh, negotiations between 
you and the rest of your people. He nods. I find these I find this acceptable. Excellent. Then let us prepare the Aryan as a negotiation ground. Sir, would you like me to alert Paul? I believe Paul could be greatly used here. Okay. All right. So it is uh, 7.30, my time. 9.30, or 10.30, probably the rest of the playing group. But uh, this would be a good place to take a bio break. Uh, this will be a scene change, so drop one momentum. Let's be back in about 15 minutes, so a quarter to the hour. And we shall see what the diploma what diplomacy we will rot. So I will get the countdown timer going. And I will see you guys all momentarily. Alrighty. Sounds good. I'm, gonna, I'm going to go food. And we are back. So, uh, true to your word, you have prepared the USS Arion and have launched it. So, just so I can get all the right... Oh, wrong map. Right map. Just so that I can get all the people in the right places. Who is in command of the ship at the moment? Um... Oh, I'll take it. I'll do it. Okay. It'll be my ship, yes. <laughs> newly, pr newly promoted Commander Keevan. Okay. Keevan's in command. Crawford's on, on the Arion. Dolroom's staying in charge of the station. <laughs> okay, so we have... Okay, so we have... Captain Crawford is present in a non... Or more of an oversight mode. Uh... Demos, do you wish to be on the ship in some way, shape, or form, or do you want to keep an eye on the station? I'll be keeping an eye on the station. Okay. So, let's find ourselves. Someone might want to make a supporting character for tactical here, because I don't think we have many proper tactical officers. Um, but in the meantime, let's find ourselves. Um... Cool. Miss Keel, for the moment, will be manning tactical. And I was about to say, maybe we could send Dura. Yeah. Dura, too. Um, the only thing I have with Dura is that, is that she is far more... Uh, she has far fewer activations left on her, whereas Keel has a lot more that could be more ship-focused. Right. Such as a ship or tactical systems focus. Precisely. Dora has tactical systems as a focus. <laughs> oh, does she? Okay. Uh, yeah, she does. What do you know? Oh, we could use Dura. That works too. So, we'll bring Dura. And for science... Not that you're going far. So, let's bring out... Um, Nah, she's a counselor, not a scientist. Deckard can go. He can always get another scan of the... <laughs> yes. Transwarp I think that'd be funny. Okay. So, Mud departs and makes his way to the entrance of the Carceri Nebula. That's so, a map we haven't seen in a while. Ooh, oh, pretty. yeah. Last time you actually saw this map, I think there was it was being cluttered up by Klingon detritus. Yeah, it was very at the like very beginning of the entire series. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say I have never seen that. No, this is definitely yeah, a very old. <laughs> yeah, this is the only stable entrance to the nebula. Mm hmm. I'm actually surprised none of you have tried to take a ship through the an unstable part of the nebula yet, because I have entire roles and challenges ready for that. 
but thanks for the idea. You're welcome. I was gonna say it's not that I haven't thought about it; it just hasn't been story appropriate yet. Fair. So we have that for there, and then we have several. Hey, laddies, I got it. I'll fly her right through the side. <laughs> Silence down there in engineering. <laughs> Silence! I kill you. Okay. Uh, the USS Arion makes its way or enters the far end of the uh, passage and makes its way through the roiling clouds that are encircling the only stable entrance and exit way t to the nebula. It's not hard to for your sense or it's not long before your sensors pick up several uh, Sparham class cruisers aka scale 4. So they're roughly on size, uh, oh no, sorry, they're scale 5, so they're larger than your ship. I'll just size appropriately. There we go. Are you feeling suitably intimidated yet? Only slightly. Okay, that's Not about right. Yeah, we, we we got a bunch of Borg somewhat nearby, so Borg with no ships. Yeah, they don't have ships. Don't worry about it. The size of your starship, it's how you use it. <laughs> yep, that's that for you. Okay, where were we at here? Oh yes. So, as you approach the blockade, the first or the lead ship moves out and begins hailing. I will answer their hail. All right. And you are surprised to see Ambassador Cavus, uh, the former ambassador that was on board Deep Space 15, for the short period of time that you guys had successful relationships with the Vitars, before the whole thing with the Borg and they closed their borders off in disgust at your actions. Yeah, fun. Paul's going to be busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she looks uh, over the assembled individuals on the bridge and she begins to speak. My name is Cavus. I am the I am the leader for the people for Vitars State. You are currently holding the you're currently holding the Imperator of the Imperator Japler the Final, Adrak Charmal, and several others who are wanted for various cr for various crimes such as conspiracy, uh, genocide, uh, murder, treachery, treason, basically any number of things. We ask, out of respect for your pe generally peaceful and respectful nature, that you hand them over. And we will cease this blockade. We are under the impression that there is a lot more going on than simple charges to be brought against the Imperior and his entourage. So why don't we go into a further discussion where we can talk it over between the Imperator, yourselves, and us as a neutral party? And what, what, ah, sorry. I have seen the Federation's neutrality policy in practice, and it leaves a lot to be desired. What guarantee do we have for our safety, and my party's safety, if we are to beam on board your vessel? You have the guarantee of the Federation that, with myself commanding this vessel and the uh, various other Starfleet officers aboard, that your safety is assured. Uh, Roman, and, oh, sorry, go ahead, Crawford. And I guess this will sort of be me assisting on this task that you're about to have Keevan do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and should any harm come to your people aboard this festival due to extend from my officers, I will take full responsibility for that. 
All right, and if Keevan could please roll me a presence plus command test. Captain Crawford can assist. This is going to be a difficulty of... Actually, let's just say that this is going to be opposed by Miss Cavus. Ooh, but I'm also going to use my cultural flexibility talent. Ooh. Oh, wait. When learning about another culture or acting appropriately, reduce difficulty by... Yes? Um, I will let that... <laughs> Uh, you're kind of well. You're sort of. Hmm. Yeah, I'll let that slide. Let's let's go ahead and use it. Okay. Now that was presence command. Presence command, and you need to. Oh, she got two successes. You need th a combined total of three or more. Let's see. Um. Presence command. Now I do have the advisor talent, Kevin, so you can re-roll a d20. You know, let's let's assure this as much as we can. You know what? I'm going to pop my determination. Uh, Starfleet is more than just people. It's an ideal. Ah, okay. That's a good one. That's, uh, that's the three successes you need. And I will use do my challenge die veteran to see if I can get my determination back. All right. And not tonight. Nope, not tonight, I'm afraid. I was in a game of Nighthawk where they spent their determination three times and got it back each time because of Veteran. Dang! I know. Mind you, that's the only time that that's actually worked in the entire uh, game up until that point, but, you know. <laughs> there is hope. Um, Ambassador Cavus, uh, she closes her eyes momentarily. Uh, she looks off screen where someone is... Where, and begins having a muted conversation with someone. Very well. Myself and two others shall use your transporter technology to beam aboard. We shall send your we shall send coordinates when we are ready. Sounds excellent. We will await your command. Keevan out. Okay. Now comes a roll for the uh, Imperator. Uh, because the ship has diplomatic suites, we need to see what the Imperator's overall disposition is going into this. Uh, because he, at the, for the moment, Captain, he is still fairly certain that by you offering your ship to as a platform to host his negotiations on, that this means that you're sort of siding with him on the matter. However, he probably needs to be convinced otherwise and this is going to be a role by the captain which will be or or paul whichever one of you wants to take the lead with this and I've... okay go ahead Sorry. because the ship has diplomatic suites i believe it's only appropriate that we use the darn things yeah yo which i believe is I don't actually remember what those are. You actually get an assist or something? Like, the ship uses... Yeah, the ship... Command or something? Yeah, the, uh, the ship, I believe, assists. By uh, computer command or structure command. Yeah. Um, so, whichever one you believe is... more favorable. Probably say... Probably uh, it's... command here. Do you want Paul to take command, or do you want to take command of the role? Um, I think I think I'll do Crawford here because th this is sort of Crawford's jam. So as in, Paul's built for it too. I mean, because like yeah, like diplomacy or galactic politics is a focus here. Yep. Either I or. Diplomacy. I have diplomacy and linguistics. <laughs> okay, now let's not have a diplomacy dick off here, people. <laughs> But my co my control what is it control command uh, presence uh, yeah control command for diplomacy, and the ship will assist with computers command or structure command whichever. Yeah, I'm rolling a fourteen. I'm rolling a fifteen. Hmm. Um... <laughs> nah, Crawford's gonna take the lead on this. He's All right. the captain. Captain's prerogative. <laughs> Didn't you say it was presence command just a bit ago, or is it control command now? Did I say pres? Oh, uh, yeah, presence command. My apologies. Okay. And the ship will assist with computers plus 
command, I think. I've already closed the sheet off. Somebody has it open. Uh, is this a difficulty task, or is it one of those things where... This is like... going to be an opposed task. Okay. Um, and he's back to his full strength, so... He's rolling have... to beat 17. Good. Okay, um... I'm probably going to pop my determination here. Okay. Uh, you need to... You need three successes or more to beat him. Okay. Um... Let's see, trying to think of... Here, here's my values. All people are welcome, no matter where from. Mm -hmm. I think it's one that will probably work here. That sounds like it could work, yeah. Paul okay. gave you a crit. Good. Nice. Um, so nice. that's two, four, and... Um, I don't think I need a third die here. And the ship also assisted. Nice. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I shall be too threat to buy off that complication. Yeah. We oh. succeeded the crap out of that. Yeah. You so have... that's, that's seven successes total? Yeah, you... what? Whatever phrase you used, I'm assuming it's something very similar to bless your heart. Um, <laughs> you have managed... Oh, bless you. Yeah. You have managed to verbally uh, beat the Imperator down to size. Bless your heart, Imperator, but... You're wrong. <laughs> so, seven successes, we needed three to beat. Yep. Um, that so is four. Four momentum. four momentum. With So we'll have one floating momentum. Mm -hmm. Why don't we spend one of that floating and one uh, for an advantage of some sort? I don't have one necessarily in mind, but it seems like it's a good idea to do. May I? Yes. Um, if I were to remind the captain... We actually do have a bargaining chip on this negotiation. The actual criminal behind the genetic manipulation of the Imperator. This is true. And it's very true. Yeah, we'll we'll bring that up in negotiations. It's okay. Fine. Okay. That's a pretty good one to have, actually. Alright, so we get three moment or we get Two momentum because we spent two. So at... We are at five. Beautiful. We are at five. Okay. Nope, oh, that's the wrong tokens. I am just getting everything up and running for where you guys are going next. Negotiation battle. Okay, so it's not long before a transporter chief reports that they have beamed aboard. Who is going to go down and meet the M? meet their former ambassadors or yeah you know what i mean uh definitely the captain mm -hmm. Paul i'll go down there. as well okay captain i would like to stay with the imperator as his doctor okay so sulkin will tag along we have keevan and we have paul Paul is around here somewhere. Okay. Uh, you all stride into the transporter room. <clears throat> which is... And three familiar faces beam on board. Oh, I actually do recognize a couple of them. <laughs> uh, yep. <clears throat> Because this is how over-serialization works. You see familiar faces again and again and again. <laughs> uh, Ambassador Cavus stands straight and tall. Uh, the other two, Samalis and Berg, immediately, as if by reflex, go and uh, bang a pauldron to their chest, or bang a fist to their chest and salute. Then they realize, oh wait, we're not supposed to do this anymore, and stop. Then they look to uh, Kev... And they look to Cavus for guidance. She takes a wary step forward and down one of the steps. Captain Crawford, on behalf of the Vitars, ho hoping to establish a Vitars state, I thank you for offering you your vessel, for offering us your vessel for diplomatic talks. And she glares at Japler the final. And 
and her uh, ah, her voice dr begins to drip with ice uh, that would actually affect the temperature in this room if you know it could Imperator Jappler Jappler just nods his head Miss Cavus I for what it's worth I remember you serving the Imperium well your gift of linguistics insight into diplomacy has led you well has served the Imperium well and I see it has done you very well too you are now in a form of command she nods rebellion does weird things to a person it's not the role I have chosen but it is the role that has been thrust upon me in some way I thank the captain and the Federation for opening my eyes to seeing what other forms of civilization is out there ours has become backward and corrupt I can't wait until it's left in the annals of history and unless anyone wishes to say something she will say Please, we are ready to begin negotiations. Paul will step forward and open the door. Then if you will f go right this way. Mm -hmm. uh, Imperator Jappler takes two steps forward as towards the door, then has a slight pause, takes two steps back, and gestures for the visiting party to go first. This catches Cavus off guard, but she recovers quickly enough, and they begin moving out. Ooh, the mighty dance of diplomacy. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. <clears throat> okay. To the observation lounge, to her diplomatic suites, or whatever mm -hmm. we're going to call it. Well, we don't have those, but we do have a conference room, so that's that enough. So, uh, because I've you don't wish to roleplay all sides of this thing even though it would be amusing to or tiresome I'm not sure which if I wanted to roleplay all sides of this I would just write a story tiresome apparently we're on the USS Nova yeah <laughs> there's all that there's all that where is Adrak Tramal Where is he? I had his token. Then it went away. Don't trust the Vitars. There it is. But we're all sitting in a room with them. You're actually outnumbered by them. If they all teamed up against you, it would be a fun fight. But... Okay. So. Uh, the sides are pretty... Uh, pretty narrow. Or... What am I looking? What am I going to say? So the sides are pretty diametrically opposed. Uh, the Imperator obviously wants the Imperium his way. Ambassador obviously wants things done her way. So what I am going to make a suggestion on is that this is going to be a extended work track, but there is only going to be so much, so many um, intervals that will be able to pass. And depending on how well you, or how poorly you do during such time, we'll determine the outcome. And we'll determine how things go for the station in the upcoming season. He says slightly maniacally. So, this is going to be a work track of 15. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of 4. Uh, this is going to have a resistance of 4. And, oh, magnitude, right. Magnitude of three. <clears throat> uh, okay. So, things along the lines of control, command, presence, command, insight, uh, command. If you want to try meta coming at this from different perspectives, medicinal. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about the advantage you created having a... Just going to bring it up. <laughs> having a fall guy. Yeah. That's going to lo lower the difficulty to uh, starting difficulty to three. Got it. 
so stuff along those lines. I so wish my species talent was more effective here. Because Paul has calm under... Polios possess an unwavering calm nature, allowing them to ignore the stress of a crisis. When attempting a task with control to resist stress or mental aff affliction, you may reroll one d to <laughs> one die on your pool. Yeah, um, oh, okay. that's like, pretty dark. The decent. first part, the first part is great. The second part does not help me at all. No, no, it doesn't. Although with his activation, I did just give him the value of negotiations are my specialty. Perfect. So, um, so whichever one of you. Uh, lovely diplomats wish to take the lead on this you can only be assisted either by the ship or by another person here so only one assists per role um let's see here um considering what you was that the uh you said that was a value you just took with paul Scotty? i just gave i did just gave paul negotiations are my specialty okay um i think that would actually be a good chance for Paul to take the lead here, and I can have Crawford assist. That'd be good because Crawford assists higher than what the ship does. Yeah. That and I have advisor. So oh, there <laughs> you go. Nice. All right. So, so have your first roll. Paul, uh, Paul will straighten up and clear his throat and basically go, I commend both sides here willing to come to the table to discuss the future of your people. It takes great leaders on all sides to be able to do things th such as this. Smooth. Very smooth. Very smooth. Uh, so feel free to make your roll, and because I don't have much else to spend threat on, I will just spend threat to increase the complication range 18 to 20. Okay. Presence command? Sure. Control command. Um, I, actually, roll me that. insight command first, just to give you, uh, for, you know, because before you start diplomacy, you have to first suss things out a bit. So, All right. insight commands, please. Insight command. Or reason. Yeah, too late. You've already rolled. Okay. Yeah, I'm shooting for the same thing either way. Yeah. Yeah, same reason command or insight command are both the same. Um. Okay, that's nothing from Crawford. What about? You're going to pop your determination here? I, yeah, I was just going to say, um, I'm going to pop the determination okay. for negotiations on my specialty um, for the autocrit. Gotcha. And then anybody opposed of me taking two momentum for a third dice? No, please do. And diplomacy as a focus. Mm-hmm. That's three successes. Uh, sorry, but three I successes have, rolled. I have, I have an 18, and Crawford has an 18. I can re-roll. Oh, yes. That's mine. right. I forgot to check. Crawford cannot. Uh, I forgot to check the dice roll, so thank you. Yeah, so that's two crits, so you can... You can re-roll that one zero there. And I re-rolled re my complication away. Okay. So two, four. That's six successes yep. on a difficulty... Four? Difficulty three. Yeah, uh, difficulty three. So that brings you up to max momentum again. Okay. Uh, what am I going to do for that crit? Um, hmm. So Oof. what I'm going to do with that crit. Zeros. Yeah, that's only three. That's only three uh, checks. Oh, and the resistance is four. Yeah. So you can either spend a momentum, re-roll the zeros, spend momentum, lower resistance, you know, do what you want. Let's re-roll the zeros. Okay. Oh my, oh my god. god. Oh, wow. Okay, that's... Should, should we try and shave off that the resistance so we still have some of the work track done? I mean, we can get rid of two... We can get rid of the resistance by getting rid of... by spending two momentum. Yeah. So we'll yeah. at least get three on the work track and get something on there. It won't be a breakthrough or reduce in magnitude, yeah. but it's something. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't reduce... You don't achieve a breakthrough, but you're not terribly off. Uh, so as part of your complication... 
Um, Dr. Sulkin, as Paul begins espousing the benefits of working together, um, laying the trump card of the source of the Imperator's mental or pre previous mental state, uh, you're noticing a slight change in uh, uh, Imperator Japler's facial expressions. His eyes begin sort of growing like Crazy Mart or Crazy Galron, and his uh, he, you notice a potential mental relapse beginning to occur. Okay. Are you, are we going to do that? Are we doing this like combat? Are you guys are you going next, or do we go next again? Or... Oh no, this is this is a work track based on uh, okay. everything that's going on. I'm basically saying that to continue to actually do work on the work track, you're. Okay, because yeah, that's if... what I said. I, the next round, I, I want to do. I want to support him. Um, okay, so how do you wish to do this? Like crap. Um, sorry, I got off the couch and just got a little bad like crap. Oh. Um, anyway, uh, yes, I want to support him with my guided therapy. Basically, say something calming and uh, supportive of him. Okay. To him. Uh, because you're using therapy, this is a medicine test, so roll me presence plus medicine. And if you can make it work in with the uh, with the dialogue. Uh, actually, yeah, let's make this part of the work track thing. That sounds like okay. a good idea to me. <clears throat> um, and I... Do I want to spend more threat right now? Sure, let's do another 18 to 20. Because that, so <laughs> that worked well so far. May what the hell for Oh God. hello. That's, Wait, uh... why did you roll did you buy a third die? Yeah, that was what I was doing. You okay. didn't say you were. Uh, I was gonna say you didn't say you were. <laughs> ah, well I, I did see him take the momentum afterwards, but eh. Well I did Oh I <laughs> It's uh, possible his headset cut out right when he said he was going to. My bad. But it doesn't matter. So that's a crit. But one of... Actually, he's sort of doing this on his own. So I don't know if anyone can assist. Actually, uh, I mean, I would argue that the ship Yeah, can let's have the ship roll. Uh, so have the ship roll struck... Or computers plus... Command. Computers command. Yeah. Okay, so that's three successes from the Arion, which is a good thing. Uh, so, Lieutenant Commander Sulkin, you're able to... Or, can you please roll me seven challenge dice, please, Sulkin? <clears throat> oh, there it is. Yep. Nice. Ooh, very nice. Okay. I request so use... resistance for. So if we get rid, if we spend a momentum to get rid of one resistance, we get it'll a... knock it down to five, and we get a breakthrough. That's right. Yeah. And then we still have a momentum to fall back on. Instead of getting rid of all four resistance, we could get rid of all four resistance, but it doesn't affect. We get a break only one breakthrough regardless. Okay. Makes sense to me. So, let me roll. Okay, so that is five on the work track. That brings it down to difficulty of two. Magnitude of two. Uh, so, Dr. Sulkin, you uh, quite fluidly pick up the uh, trail of dialogue from Paul, espousing the virtues of mental stability, and peace of or peace of mind, and you know various Vulcan or <laughs> what's his uh, Sirach, yes, uh, the, the, of the teaching of Sirach, and this has a calming effect on the Imperator's mental state. You see his eyes narrow again and get slightly less stabby. And it doesn't seem that Ambassador Cavus has noticed anything. 
And for the critical, or for the crit fail, I'm just going to take threat for that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, don't thank me yet. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. All right. One more go. Yeah, um, we'll have Crawford take the lead here. Sure. Uh, at this point, uh, it's time to bring things home. So if you could do me a presence command test. Yep. Um, he'll kind of... Uh, I'll give a little bit of a speech here before I roll. Sure. Uh, kind of go on to explain. And a an organization like the United Federation of Planets, there have been many compromises between all of its species to create a peaceful coalition of multiple governments. The you, the Imperator, and you, Ambassador, have different ways of wanting to run this government for the Vitars. Maybe in some extent you can come together to find a new way to run things using ideas that you both have. And go ahead and roll here. Mm -hmm. Paul would um, suggest something like a constitutional monarchy or... Something like that, hmm. where both sides can have their voices be heard in the government of the people. Uh, Y'all good with me taking our last momentum here for a third die? Yes. Sure. Um, yeah, because I don't have a challenge, a value I can challenge here. Um, presence, presence command... I definitely have a focus here. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. But oh. you have... Oh, no, you have advisor. <gasps> you can't, you yeah, have it's to... only by assist. <laughs> 1917, and I rolled a crit zero. And all... <laughs> if only uh, I had spent a threat. Oh, he didn't spend... He didn't say he was spending the threat, so nope. that's fun. I didn't spend threat to increase the complication range. Uh, so you succeed. Uh, so roll me seven challenge dice, please. Yep. You Come have on. no momentum left. Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Ugh. But resistance four. Resistance four. Uh, yeah. Don't have momentum, which sucks ass. Um, uh, can't we give a threat to do the can. same as momentum? Um, yes, you could give me threat. No. Although, I kind of want to give you threat to get rid of that complication. Well, that, that part's too late. That's come and gone. Yeah. Um, in that case, let's see. Do we want to do two threats to just shape off that resistance and complete the work track and get a breakthrough, or what do we? Well, if we, so, if we spent, if we did two threat, we would not only complete the work track, we would also be over five, so that'd be two breakthroughs and get rid of the rest yeah of the extended task so we would succeed if we give him two threat because we just have a magnitude of two left yeah so we would get a breakthrough for completing more than five and then for completing the work track okay yeah we'll give you two threats so we can just shave off that resistance and finish up the work track there okay <clears throat> So we will succeed mm -hmm. with a complication on the form. You will succeed with a complication. And in this form, I am going to... Uh, because you beat the work track, congratulations. And it sounds like the way that you are suggesting things go forward is Paul is going to produce several example um, suggestions for... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, figure, figurehead? Uh, ceremonial positions and a you know constitutional monarchy constitution uh, constitution examples um through this whole thing has lasted approximately 24 hours with a few breaks in between but while so the the threat you have given me is actually going to go into how i choose to shape the vitars for the next season which could be quite interesting but we'll learn about them later <laughs> um, both sides eventually re to call it a rousing success would be an overstatement 
uh, to call it a success would be... Mm, On par. Adequate. Adequate, yeah. To call it um, a Cold War where they're at least still talking to one another is probably more accurate. Um, Ambassador Cavus stands up, goes to leave, pauses, and this time indicates the Imperator and the Adrak to go first. They nod in thanks and leave. And make your way all the way back down to the transporter room. Where it just so happens that all their tokens are still present. Ambassador Cavus looks at Emperor or the Imperator Japeler a little less coldly this time, although if her eyes could shoot lasers, they'd probably still be set to stun. Captain Crawford, I was dubious that anything would come out of this. However, the explanation for the degradation in our society has been expertly laid out, and... She looks at Sulkin. Logical. It will take some doing to spread this message, and there will be many sects of our those who follow me and my teachings that will reject them out of hand. It's easy and it's difficult to start a rebellion. It's even more difficult getting one to stop, especially when the person that the rebellion is fighting against is still present in one way shape or form however i believe that there is progress made we will leave the blockade will cease and if the kova mesh were to be found in vitar space once again i will while i will not I don't believe that I could personally give it 100 per I cannot guarantee its safety, but I will at least broadcast that I will. I and my sect will not be attacking. That should be enough to get most of the cells in line. Uh, fair, con uh, fair conquests to you, Captain Crawford. And she nods to the transporter chief, who we don't actually have a character sheet for yet and they energize off the platform uh, up on the bridge Dura you and Mud uh, see that the ships true to their word are br breaking the blockade formation and are falling back to Vitar space captain commander the blockade is heading back to Vitar space Paul will just smile. Well, we've accomplished something today. Although, that sounds like an improvement to anything that we've had recently, so I'll take that as a win. Whether that improvement is something good or bad remains to be said. Time will tell. I We will have to provide a lot of guidance for this transition of the Vitars. Paul's going to be busy. <laughs> uh, once, uh, uh, once everything settles down in the transporter pad, uh, Japler turns to the captain. Captain, I must ask for your hospitality once again until the Kova Mesh is spaceworthy. Rest assured that your neutrality in this matter has been noted. And while I may not completely agree that you have while I find it s a little distasteful that you have not fallen in in su uh, fallen in behind in support of the Imperium you're not opposed to it either and I think that is the best I can hope for hope for from your Starfleet and I appreciate it your our hospitality will be 
gladly given to you and your people until the Cove Mesh is space worthy once more. And we will continue to support our allies in the area. Okay. And once we go back to the Carcerai entrance, uh, the Cavus is gone. The ships all depart, and the USS Arion returns from whence it came. So that sort of ends the plot for tonight. Does anyone have any wrap-up scenes they'd like to do? Does Abbott need to do the rest of the autopsy, or is that going to be... I can't say, when I get I'm... back, I'm going to help uh, oh, Abbott I'm... with the uh, surgery. <laughs> uh, tell you... He's still probably wondering what's going on there. Uh, tell you what, I will make it a priority to get the uh, Akashi species write-up done, and that should give you all the answers you need from this. <laughs> okay. Because the extended task was just kind of left there. Yeah, it was left there. <laughs> right. I apologize for that. <laughs> I will create the advantage by coming back to Medbay. <laughs> <laughs> I have returned. We can do well now. <laughs> I have returned as to Abbott, science. As Abbott's arm is like in the middle of the... Uh, Some body part, yeah. The, the body. Cavity, yeah. <laughs> she just looks up. Oh, just really now? <laughs> now you want to help. <laughs> no, actually, Although, what you, well, actually, what you do is you actually have your hand so far up it that when you know uh, Sulkin comes in, you actually bring up the corpse's head a little bit, like <laughs> a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, doctor. <laughs> Wrong sick bay. You just sort of wave its arm a bit. <laughs> <laughs> One would think that medical officers have a little more dignity than that, but then again, you're an Iocean, so who knows. I was going to say, she's a, she's her own breed. Yeah. <laughs> As she's uh, wearing stilettos in the board. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Although, I mean, fun history fact, high heels were actually made for butchers. Like, they were yes. made for men originally. So, well, most of women's fashion seems to have been made for men at, wo at one point or another. But. Ah, well. Okay. Um, anything else people wish to discuss, scene-wise or otherwise? No. I've got nothing unless people want to speak to me. Okay, then it sounds like we'll end it here. So, it's a bit of a shorter session, but with so many people apparently working early tomorrow, I figured a truncated session was humane. Um, I cannot guarantee the same for next session, which will be on the 26th, which How will dare. be the season finale for Cerberus Station. So, thank you all for watching, thank you all for playing, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye.